So of all the things that we cover in kind of chapter four, this is probably one of the, is definitely one of the more important ones. Oh, my screen's on the wrong side. Um, this is definitely one of the more important ones because the recycler view is going to be one of those ones that you'll see on the test more than once. Um, it's, it's really, really important for most applications. So nearly every application you have will have a recycler view in it at some point because it comes up anytime we have a list of items. Okay, And I don't know of a single real world app that doesn't have a list of items. As soon as you introduce a database, you're going to have lists. Um, so, so it's really important for working with lists. Um, we did previously kind of talk about how to add a, a scroll view. A scroll view is fine for a small amount of, of content that you need to be able to scroll through, especially if it's kind of fixed. Um, but it doesn't really work well when you have a lot of data that you need to show, right? So the recycler view really shines when I've got hundreds, thousands, millions of items I want to show at once. It only needs enough data, enough um, controls to display what's on screen, plus a little more. So we call it recycler view because what happens is as you're scrolling through it, it will throw away the items that are not on screen and then reuse or recycle the views. So what we're going to build here is we're going to build this word list with the recycler. So you can kind of scroll up and down, um, but as you scroll up and down, you can see the items one through seven are kind of off screen, right? Well, with the normal scroll view, we would have to keep all of those items, right, in memory. Recycler view means it only has so many. Now, there is an older control that works very similar to this, which is called a list view. Um, a list view is basically works almost exactly like your dropdown, like your spinners, um, except that it's always open. Um, and it does use the same kind of adapter. Um, so a list view does take less code to set up than a recycler view, um, but it doesn't have all the performance benefits or the flexibility um, that a recycler view does. Because the other thing we can do with this recycler view is we can create layouts. Every item in here is actually a layout can do multiple controls, which means it's really, really flexible. But that also means there's some additional code that we have to write because it supports that. Does that make sense? It's not just a, a list of strings. It can be a list of whatever items we want to show. Okay. So, so that's what we're going to build here in the simplest version. So where we want to start um, I'm going to go into Android Studio. I'm going to create a new project. So I'm going to say start new Android project. I'm going to start from the basic activity. As I've kind of mentioned to some of you already, at this point, you can kind of assume that most of the projects we do going forward are going to be easier to start as a basic activity than an empty activity. Um, because we're using the action bar and the floating, the floating button to do a number of things. So I'm going to start with the basic activity. Okay. Now this application, I'm going to call it um, Recycler View, is the actual name of the application. I'm going to make sure this shows up in the projects file. Okay. So we're going to call it Recycler View, Android X, we're at 21, okay. So we're going to hit finish and get that started. So again, the name of this application is Recycler View. Okay, so now that we've got our, our empty kind of recycle, our empty activity or our basic activity up and running, 
the first thing I need to do is add in some way of storing the list of words. Remember? So our goal is to have this list of words that we're showing. And we're also going to let the user add additional words to that list or respond to when the user clicks on a particular word. Okay. So in order to start this off, I'm going to add a list that's going to store that list of words. So private, final, array list of strings. This is going to be my M word list. Um, I need to hit Alt Enter to import that. Oh, okay. I need to do that. So M, so new. I just need to put the right side of that is what I hadn't finished. Okay. So I'm creating an empty list of strings. Um, I am going to be using a array list here. The the code labs, if you're walking through it, does say linked list, um, but for performance reason, it's it's generally better to use an array list in nearly all cases. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just use an array list there. Okay. So we've got the list, but so far it's empty. Um, so we need to go into the onCreate method and populate it with some data. Um, Actually, I'm going to move this a little bit. So rather than making it final and initializing it here, I'm just going to not initialize it here. OK. So now down in on create, there. So I'm going to create the array list, and then we need to loop through and populate that list with some items. So for int i is equal to 0, i is less than 20, plus plus i. So I'm going to add 20 items to my word list. That's going to fill my word list with just a bunch of items that say word 0, word 1, word 2, word 3, which will be enough for, for the data that we need here. Should we extract that string? No, you don't need to extract that string. Um, but what I will do um, is I will take these controls that I have here and I will move them into um, variables. So I do want to take the toolbar and the FAB and put them into some instance variables. So private toolbar M toolbar private floating action button M FAB and then I'm going to swap all that out. And that's just a matter of cleaning up what was already there. Okay. All right. So I've got some data in my word list, but I'm not really showing it yet. Um, what I want to do next is give that um, floating action button, I want to give it a different icon. Um, so I'm going to go into Drawable and I'm going to create a new Drawable resource. 
new image asset. Um, we're going to go to action bar and tab icons. We're going to call this IC add. I'm just going to call that IC add. Um, and then go find the plus icon. There, which is called add. I want to make sure that's set to hollow dark. So it shows up in white. Okay, so again, the icon I'm adding is IC add, and it's got the plus icon. Okay. Add the icon. Go back to the activity main layout. And in here, I want to change the icon from IC dialog email to, and just replace everything that's there. So at drawable IC add. That way I've got a plus icon there. Can you go back to the main activity? Back to the main activity? Yes. Yes. So really all I did uh, is I just kind of extracted the toolbar and the fab to some member variables. Okay. Did you remove the set support action bar? It's right here. Oh, print on bar. Does everybody have that? We're all up to up to speed. Okay, I hear some typing still. Um, it's not. Okay. I haven't converted it to a lambda or anything like that yet. It's just it automatically kind of hides that, makes it look like a lambda. All good. So we build our list of words and we have changed the icon. Okay, that's done with task one. All right, so now going on to task two, and I'm, I'm really following along basically with the, the code lab here, if you want to look, follow along there as well. So the next thing we want to do is, is actually add in the recycler view. And they've got kind of a, a, a layout here of, of how this works. So we start out on the left. We've got the data, right, which is a list of strings. Um, we then need to feed that data to an adapter. Okay, And that adapter is going to turn the items into controls. Okay, It's going to take the items, turn them into controls. Um, in there, we also will have something called a view, view holder, which is part of implementing that adapter. Um, and then finally, that adapter feeds to the recycler view, to, which is actually going to display them. We'll also in there need to set the layout manager. The layout manager tells it how to arrange the items in the recycler view. Um, so we have basically three options for what to use with our layout manager on a recycler view. We can either use a vertical sort of linear layout, or I can use a horizontal lay orientation uh, linear layout, or I can actually use a grid. Um, so if I wanted to say all of the items I wanted to show of like three items per row, I can do that as well with the recycler view, and all I have to do is swap out the layout manager. Does that make sense? So you can fairly easily with the recycler view say on a on a phone, it's just one column, one item per column, and one item per row. And then on a tablet, maybe it's four items per row, right? Getting more space, more use out of your space. Okay. So, so there's different parts that we have to put in there. So we've got the data, check. We need to add a recycler view, um, and then we also will need to create the adapter as well as putting in the layout manager. So next up, we want to go put in the recycler view. 
Okay, so I'm going to go back to content main, not activity main, content main. So content main just has a text view in it right now that's saying hello world. I'm going to yoink that out. I'm going to remove that. And in its place, I'm going to drag in a recycler view. Okay, so in content main, we're going to delete the text view, add in a recycler view. Okay. Now I want to connect that to all four sides. So maybe I set to eight margins, and then I'm just going to hook up all those constraints. So it's got a margin of eight on all sides. Okay. And you can see that I've set the um, width and height to match parent. I, that can actually probably be a match constraint at this point. So my layout's pretty simple. That's that's all that's really in there is going to be just the single recycler view. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So let's run this real quick just to make sure that we've got our ducks in the row. So I'm going to run this on the Nexus S. So what you should see is this, which what you should have is here, it says recycler view up at the top, the middle is blank, and we've got a plus icon for a floating action button. Um, there aren't any items showing up because we haven't given those words to the recycler view. We just put the recycler view in there, which by default doesn't have any content in it. Okay, so now that we've got the layout ready, um, we also need to create another layout for the individual items. So in the layout folder, I'm going to right click here and create a new layout. So layout resource file. Um, and this one I'm going to call item underscore word. So kind of like we start activities with the word activity, when we start content with fragment, um, any of these item layouts that I've got for an individual item in a recycler view, we usually start with item. So I'm saying right click, create new layout. So I'm creating a new layout. It's called item underscore word. Okay. All right. So it created it as a linear layout. Interesting. Um, I'm going to change this a little bit. So I want the orientation of this to actually be horizontal. Or no, I'm going to leave it vertical. I'm going to leave it vertical. Um, so I'm going to put in there. It won't really matter much um, because I'm just going to keep, uh, I'm only going to have one item in there. Now I do want to add a little bit of padding. Um, so we're going to add 6 dp of padding. And then inside of there, I need to add a text view, which is where we're actually going to show the word. Um, the width of this is going to be match parent, wrap content. And then I need to add a few more properties. OK, so the ID, Android. ID is equal to word. Okay, so we're going to give an ID of word. We're going to give it a text size of 24 SP. Twenty-four SP and Android text style. So that's going to be bold. So we've got 204 SP textile bold. Um, I may also want to add some sort of placeholder text so I can see what it looks like. So I'm going to go down to the text with a wrench here and say 
um, item word. And what you can see there is it's set it as tools text instead of setting it as Android text. So I've got a linear layout with a text view inside. Pretty simple. Um, one thing I need to remember to do, and this is usually the one of the things that people forget when creating an item layout, is you need to change the width and height of the container. Um, by default, whatever container you start with, those will both be set to match parent, which says take up the entire screen. Um, but recognize we don't want each item to take up an entire screen. Right. If I leave that as is, I'm only going to see one item per, per screen. Okay. So I need to change one of these to be wrap content. So I'm going to say the height is wrap content. If we were running um, mm -hmm. horizontal yep. orientation, would we change the width for that content? Correct. Yeah. So if I was doing a horizontal layout, then I would need to have match parent as the height and wrap content as the width. Mm -hmm. uh, but because I know I'm going to be showing items vertically, that's what I need to set the, the width and height of the parent to, of the container to. So I've got three layouts here. I've got activity main, which is the screen overall, right? So this is with all the toolbar and such. That then includes content main. All that's in content main is our recycler view. And then inside of there, I've got this layout that just represents a single item in the recycler view. Does that make sense? So you're always going to end up with another layout here for each item. Now, the flexibility of that is this is another layout. I can do anything I want here, right? I can have that layout for an item be as complicated as I need it to be. Okay. So now that we've created the layout, um, one thing I'm going to do real quick, we kind of haven't talked about styles yet, um, but one of the things they ask us to do here is go ahead and take a lot of the styles that we got on that text view and extract them, right? So you see we've got all these properties set, right? <clears throat> So if I go into here, I'm going to right click and let's see, I need to go to refactor, extract, we're going to extract style. Okay, so right click on the text view, say refactor, extract, style. You will need to do this from the text view, not from the, um, the designer view. Okay. So what it's going to ask us is what styles do we want to kind of extract? Now, a general rule of thumb, I would say don't extract the width and the height. The width and the height always needs to be set on the individual control. Okay. So if we're going to extract a style like this, don't extract the width and the height. But you can extract the other things. So here we're extracting the text size and the text style. Now, the name of this... I'm going to call it um, style word. Okay. And what you can see is it's it's taken what was there for the text size and the um, and the text style the bold and the text size, it's taken those and it's moved it somewhere else, okay? Which actually means that I can use that style in other places in the app, potentially, okay? Now, to look at where that went, let's go into app, go into res, go into values, go into styles. So there is my style word now. So I can actually apply that to any text view I want now. And that will change their text size and their text style to be 24 SP in bold. So that way, if I have a bunch of different places I need to change that, I can kind of change that in one place. Okay, we'll talk about more about styles in lesson five, um, but this is kind of just getting a peek at it. Okay, 
So I've got those styles. And I'm going to go into my Java folder now. Now that we've, I think we've got most of the things we need set up on the resource side, we're going to go back to the Java side. So I'm going to right click on the folder here and create a new Java class. Okay. Now the name of this class will be Word List Adapter. Okay. So it's going to be Word List Adapter. So I have my word list adapter. That word list adapter now needs to be a subclass. Extends recycler view. Dot adapter. Now adapter is parameterized. Um, so I have to tell it what, what that parameter is. Now the parameter it needs is a what we call a view holder okay that view holder class we'll have to create and we haven't created it yet um, but we'll do that in a minute so i'm going to say that what i want here is word list adapter dot view holder or word view holder Actually, really, it can just be. Uh, no, I'm going to do word view holder. So, word view holder. Okay. It's giving me some errors. That's okay. I haven't implemented any of the methods that I need to implement for the adapter class, which is abstract. And I've also got this word view holder class, which I haven't created yet. Okay. So, the next thing I'm going to do is create that word view holder. So, I'm going to say public class. Word view holder. Now, word view holder is also a subclass, so extends um, recycler view dot. Actually, I think I can just do, yeah, recycler view dot view holder. I've got a lot of errors on my code right now. That's okay. Um, but I need to create this class basically first. Okay. So I'm going to go into the view holder right here. I'm going to hit Alt Enter. Okay. Con create constructor matching super. Cool. I'll give you something like this. So now our, our view holder is at least it's happy. Okay. Um, let's also go up to the top. I'm going to do Alt Enter again. We're going to say implement the methods. Okay. It's going to ask me which methods I want to implement. Um, and I'm going to implement all of them. Okay. So I'm just going to hit OK. Okay. So these three methods we're seeing, you see that's part of the word list adapter. And then I can see that I've got the word view holder down, kind of nested inside of my adapter class. Okay, This is typically the way that we're going to build our adapters. We're going to have the view holders that are always going to be inside of the adapter class, because you really need them to build the adapter in the first place. Okay, They're really an important or vital part. OK, but at least now it's not complaining. There's some bunch of stubs here. There's a bunch of code that we have to write, but at least there's no complaint. It's not complaining that we're missing something. Okay. So I need to implement that view holder. Okay. Now typically in the view holder what you're going to see is member variables for each of the different um, fields that are in your item layout. Okay. So in our case, if we look at our item layout, what controls have we added to it? We've added a text view, right? Now, if I had more controls in there, I need more variables. Okay, but I'm going to add a reference for every control I have in my layout. Let me go back to the word list adapter. Okay, so I have a single text view, so I'm going to add that here. 
private. Actually, I need to be public. Public. Um, final. Text view. Or maybe M word. I'm just going to call that M word. So now there's 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 a few things that are a little bit unusual here. So first of all, um, I'm marking it final, and you want to do this with every control that you have on the the view holder because these shouldn't ever change. Once the once the object's constructed, we shouldn't map those to another control. Okay, so the view holders, all of these properties should be final. Okay, um, you'll also notice that I'm marking it public, which may seem kind of odd, right? What do I usually mark my member variables as? Private. Private. Okay, um, the reason I'm doing this is because basically this view holder class is only used inside of the adapter. Okay, and we're going to access them directly without actually using getters and setters as we might normally think we would do. Okay, so that's why I'm marking it public. Um, so I just have that one. What I need to now do is go into the constructor and set up that variable. Okay, so we've got the, the basic constructor. You'll notice that it takes a view. Okay. That view that it's receiving will be the root of our item layout. Okay, that'll be the root of our item layout. So similar to how we work with activities, we need to go grab all of the controls that are part of that layout. Okay, so I'm going to say m word is equal to item view dot find by id find view by id r dot id dot word remember word is the id that we gave it back in the item word layout okay that's all i need to do right now with my uh, with my view holder okay your constructor needs to grab all of the controls that are in the layout and just save them to a variable does that make sense okay so your your view holder is a relatively small class. All of the really interesting code is going to happen elsewhere. Okay. Um, so let's go back up. So I need a constructor first for my adapter. So I'm going to say public wordless adapter. Okay. And what I need to take in here is I need to take in the actual items I'm going to show. Okay, so if we if we think about how we stored our items previously, how did we store them back in the main activity? How do we store our words? As a list, right? So a list of what type? List of strings, right? So I need to have a list of strings here as well. So the actual data, private list string. M word list. And I'm also going to mark this one final. Okay. M word list. I need to take in that list when we construct the adapter. And save it. You'll see I'm using the word final in a lot of places here, um, and that's basically just to avoid a lot of common mistakes that people make with adapters, because um, a lot of these things really depend on those variables never changing. Okay. So I'm, when I create the adapter, I'll supply it with a list, and that list is what I'm actually showing. 
The next thing I want to do is now that I've got that, I can implement the item count method. Okay. So the item count just needs to return m word list dot size. So that tells the recycler view how many items the adapter has. That works there because there's a lot of things that I could back the, I need that there because there's a lot of different things that I could back the adapter with. I could back it with a list. I could back it with an array. I could back it with a database structure of some sort or a web service. So the recycler view needs to have some way to know how many items there are, um, but we want to kind of remove that knowledge from the recycler view so it doesn't know how it's getting it, but it needs to know how many there are. Um, so that's how we implement that. Okay. So the next one I want to implement is the onCreate view holder. Okay. So the onCreate view holder says, okay, I need to create a new view holder. That's that's its job is to create new view holder objects whenever they're needed. Okay. And remember the recycler view only creates as many as it needs, and it will reuse those view holders. Okay. So in there. Oh, I also need to get, in order to do that, I do need my inflator, so I also need to add that logic. Um, so let me go back up here. Private, final, layout inflator, M inflator. Um, and I do need a context for that inflator. So context okay m inflator is equal to layout inflator dot from context. So I'm creating that inflator initially, and then I'll just reuse it as I need it. Okay. So in on create, go down here on create view holder. So I'm going to create so view item view. is equal to m inflator dot inflate. I need to tell which layout to inflate. So r dot layout dot item word. Okay. I need to use parent there and then false. So it's kind of very similar to what we saw the other day with the fragments, right? Where I had to use an inflator to inflate the layout. Huh? Well, an inflator stuff to use. Do you have this, this, and that? Do you have the variable, the line in the constructor? If so, I have to construct it. That's part of you haven't imported the class. Well, it's not a. You mm -hmm. have a typo in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um. So we inflate the specific layout for the item, and then we just say return new word view holder and pass in the item view. Okay. 
the relatively simple two line. <laughs> So resentful lineage, yeah, item count. Okay. Returns the number of items in the adapter. We've then got on create view holder, which says, okay, I need a I need a new view holder. That gets called anytime it needs a new view holder and takes the layout and turns it into a view holder object. Okay. Because these view holder objects are going to be recycled. Okay, they're going to be reused. Finally, once I've created the view holders, I need to actually connect the data with the controls, right? So if I just stopped here, we would still see an empty list because there would be no way, there's no way that the data is shown, okay? So to show the data, I need to actually take the data out of the list and shove it into the, the specific view holder that's displaying it. So that's where on bind view holder gets called. So an on bind view holder, I've got my view holder here, and I've got the position in the list that I'm looking for. Okay. So first I need to get the item. So string item is equal to and word list dot get position. So I grab the item, and then I'm going to say holder dot m word, which is that view. I'm going to say set the text on there to the specific word. So that's the process for creating a basic adapter. Okay? Your adapters need to be a subclass of recycler view adapter. You have to create that word, that view holder specific to the adapter. And again, that's going to have properties for each field, each, each control that exists in your item layout. Okay? So if I had like three different text views, I would have three different text view variables here. Right? So that, again, the adapter, the whole job of it is to say, here's a list of items. I need to now turn that into controls, okay, and vice versa, okay. I should, why is there, oh, I'm missing a semicolon, okay. So that's, I'm done with my adapter for now. I'm going to come back to it later, um, but that's all I need to do with my adapter at this moment. Okay, so we're going to go back to main activity, um, and now we need to actually hook that adapter up and use it with the recycler view. Okay, so I need to add a few more variables up here. So I'm going to say private um, recycler view and recycler view private word list adapter m adapter okay, so I've got a place to hold my recycler view as well as a place to hold my adapter okay 
back in on create we need to grab that recycler view so m recycler view is equal to find view by id r dot id dot oh did i not give it an id i think i didn't give it an id so i need to go fix that um, back in the resource the layout i need to go back to content main because i never yeah i didn't give it an id so android id recycler view so that now i can grab it in my code here cool all right, so let's go back down to the bottom. And we want to actually populate the list. So m, uh, m adapter is equal to new word list adapter. The word list adapter needs a context and then our word list. If you remember, that's kind of what we set up in our constructor. Um, if we go back here, we see that in the constructor we took a context and then our list of words. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. And then we can tell the recycler view about that adapter. So mRecycler view dot set adapter. Okay, and give it our M adapter. So we're almost at the point where um, the recycler view is actually going to show our list of words. Okay, but we have one final bit of code that we need to add. Um, you remember I mentioned previously that you also need a layout manager. Okay, layout manager is going to tell it how to actually lay out the individual items. Um, so the simple version of that, I'm going to say m recycler view dot set layout manager. We need to create a new linear layout manager. So that's going to give us just a vertical oriented linear layout. Okay. If I wanted them to be laid out horizontally on the screen, I could add another parameter. Like so. Um, you see, I'm missing something about the constructor. Oh, because I have to say reverse. Okay. So if I wanted to change that to a horizontal orientation, I just need to call the constructor different. Does that make sense? So I would call it with horizontal and, and false, that I don't want it to reverse it. Um, but if I don't pass that parameters, it's going to be it's going to be vertical by default. Okay. Let's run it now. Come by and check that everybody's at the same place. So you should have a list of 20 words now, going from 0 to 19, and you should be able to follow up and down. Yeah. So the punch? 
actually not the same as the school view, but it, on the back end, it's saving memory. Um, Functionally, it's not very, it, it can scroll, but it's, I wouldn't call it anything very similar to the scroll. I am torn my issues. There is a lot of space in between words. I can expect it at the entire screen. You're working. Where are we settling with that? You're good. You're good. Okay. So because you didn't do the thing, so your height needs to be set to wrap on that. Because you told me that this a single item should take up the entire screen. Okay. So go ahead and run that. No. Cool. So we should all have a list of words. Um, that seems like a lot of work to just set up and display a list of words. Um, but trust me that once you grasp that, it actually lets you do a lot more than just that. Okay. That's the reason that, that all that code is, it exists there is we can do something much more complicated with that. Okay. Let's go on to task three. So the next thing we want to do is make the um, make the app do something when I click on in a particular word, right? So if I click on a word, it's going to add in the text clicked. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my adapter. Okay. And I'm going to make my view holder. I'm going to tell it to implement implements on click listener. <coughs> okay. I'm going to hit Alt Enter. I'm going to say implement methods. Okay. I'm going to pick on click. So it's going to implement the on-click method. Okay, so this is the logic that's going to happen when the user clicks on a particular item. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is find out which index I'm actually talking about, which index that they click on. So I'm going to say int index is equal to get layout position. Okay, that tells me which index in the actual list did the user click on. Okay, and that's a method on the view holder class. So any view holder has that method. Okay. Now I'm going to say I need to grab the actual word that's there. So string word, I can do that one of two ways. Um, I could either go back to the list and get it from there. Or I could just get it from the text view because I know the text view already has it. So I'm going to grab it from the text view in this case. So I'm going to say M word. Actually, no, I'll go back to list. I'll go back to list. Um, so you're not just using the video? I could. Then I have to remember I'd have to do get text dot string. Yeah. So and I'm so just. Thinking if you click it again, it might then click again. Right. It it'll work either way because the the text is there, but I'm I'm just thinking again about kind of where we're going. So at some point I want to actually grab the whole item that you clicked on. Okay. So I get the index that you clicked on. I get the data that's in that item, and then I'm going to go back to M word list, and I'm going to change what's at that index. So I'm going to say at the index you clicked on, we're going to set the text to clicked, exclamation mark, plus item.
just adding comments as to what I'm doing here. So get the clicked item, modify it. And then finally, we have to tell the adapter that the list has changed. So I'm going to say, um, now I need to use this to kind of refer to the adapter. Now remember, remember however, that I'm inside of word view holder, right? So this refers to the word view holder object, right? So how do I need to, how can I disambiguate that to point to the adapter? Remember how I had to do main activity, order activity? I need to say word list adapter dot this dot notify item changed. Or notify, um, well actually let me just do notify item changed. Index. So you can see anytime you click on an item, it's going to run this logic, which is going to grab the item, change it, and then tell the word list adapter that there's been a change to the word list, which means it's going to update the view holder. Okay. Um, now, if I just leave it as this, I still haven't hooked up my click listener. Um, so I need to go back to the onCreate method here and register my listener. So mWord dot set on click listener this okay. I'm gonna run it and if I got all, I got everything right here, I should be seeing something happen. So there we go. So you can see when I click on an item, if I keep clicking on it, it keeps adding the word clicked. Cool. Any questions? Essen? What about get layout position? So we, now we've got items that we can interact with, and really you can kind of see, hey, I'm just changing the text. I could actually be doing all sorts of things there. I could be saying, well, let's open another screen to give you like details, view an article, or to edit an article. There's a lot of different things that you can do once you respond to that event. But here I'm just doing something relatively simple. Okay, so the next piece that I want to add in is to add the behavior to the FAB, which allows us to add additional words to the list. Okay, so anytime I click that button, I want it to add another item to the end of the list. Okay, so I'm going to go back to main activity. You saw that this logic here, there's already some logic that's telling it what to do when you click on the floating action button. I'm actually going to take this real quick and, and I'm going to move it. down to the bottom. So right now it's showing a snack bar, which remember just kind of shows a, a little, almost like a toast at the bottom of the screen, which kind of slides up and then slides down. 
Um, so I'm going to remove all the logic in the on click listener there. Okay. So instead, we want to put our own logic in. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, again, my goal is when you click on the button to add an item to the list. So I'm going to say int count. Um, I'm going to say and word list dot size. So I need to find out first how big is the word list because um, that's going to be kind of the index where I'm going to add it. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. It can't what? Mm -hmm. That would be why. So mword list dot add. We're going to add it as such plus word space plus count. Okay. So it's going to end at the end, and we we're going to add a little plus at the beginning, so you can kind of see. Okay, these are item items I added later. Okay. So plus word count. Okay. So I've added it to the list, but the adapter doesn't, it hasn't, if I just leave it here, it won't actually appear on screen, right? So similar to how I needed to tell it when we clicked on the item, I needed to tell it that the item is updated. I also need to tell it that the list is updated in this case. So I'm going to say m adapter dot notify item inserted and I'll give it the index where it was inserted. Okay. So that way it will refresh. It will actually show the item. Now, if I'm not all the way at the bottom of the list, I still won't necessarily see that item without scrolling down there. Um, so a nice useful feature that I might want to add is say, well, let's go ahead and scroll the recycler view down to the bottom of the list for the user. Okay, so I'm going to say m recycler view dot smooth scroll to position. There we go. So that's going to scroll it down to the bottom so the user can actually see the item. Go ahead and give that a test at this point. Make sure that it all works. What you should see is I click the plus button, add the down and bottom here as, as plus word 20, and you can see it scrolled it down to the bottom. What is the notify? Does it call the constructor again and the adapter? Or? So the notify. We're telling the adapter that something has changed, mm -hmm. right? Which causes it to create the new um, calls it to, to either create new viewpointers or to bind them. Generally, just rebind. Uh, okay. Generally, that just results in in the adapter. It means that we're going to call on bind view holder on the on the items that have changed. Does oh. that make sense? So I told it that. Let's say this is this was item twenty is the one I added first. Right. So it's gonna call bind view holder with number twenty Is there like a a range version of notify change or notify insert? Can we well we can look. We can look real quick. Um I can for sure if I wanna say that everything has changed, I could say M adapter dot um, notify data set change. So if you say notify data set change, that tells it the entire list has changed. Mm -hmm. So if you need to tell it a range, more than likely that's probably the one you use. Okay. Um, if it's more than one item you're changing, you probably are better off just telling it the entire list has changed. Um, but you do have one here, item range has changed, item range inserted, item range removed. So you can tell it with a range, 
more than likely, if you get to that point, you're just going to tell it to refresh the whole thing. And does this kind of depend on how how large your list is? Yeah, well, and how big your change is. Yeah, because you're going to run into. Um, Remember, the only thing it has to, the only ones it has to refresh, are the ones on screen. Oh right, yeah. So it's it only has. Not that big. It's not that big. So if you're changing more than one item, you're probably best off just refreshing the so whole I was list. Thinking like big O text like yeah. No, it's relatively constant because you have a limit to how many items you can keep right. on the screen. Right. So maybe you have a list of a million items. But it only has to refresh the 20 that it's shown. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's see where is it going to go. Is it good? Can you click on an item? Okay. And then add items. Oh, I check it right on the fly out, actually. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, I just feel myself trying to say about our time to go. So, I think we've worked our way. Okay. Yep. So we've worked our way all through all of the tasks. Um, one thing I do, one thing we do want to kind of mention here at this point, notice that if we turn it sideways, we're going to lose the data. Um, so if I go back here, turn it sideways. Now I've lost all the changes I've made. Okay. Yes, so if I want to keep that, I want to preserve that, I need to save it. Um, now they say, the, the note on here at the bottom says, well, we'll show you how to do that in a later um, um, in a later lesson, but I think we've really covered everything we need to know how to do it, because if you think about what we have here, it's the same as our shopping cart, right? We're displaying a list of words. Right, so we actually do know what we need to do, what how to how to preserve the state here. Okay, so remember to preserve the state. I need to implement two methods. I need to re implement on save instance and on restore instance. So I'm going to go to the bottom of the activity. I'm going to say on save instance state. Okay. And now I need to save the list of words. Okay. Huh? Oh, I do have the wrong one. Okay. So if I look at the out state and what puts I have, okay, one important thing to notice. Do I have a way to put a string list or any sort of list? Right? There's no way to directly put a list. Um, oh, there it is, actually. I take that back. There is one. Okay, so let's say words. I was thinking I would have to turn this into an array, but maybe not. So let's go put M word list. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So on restore instance. So I can when I when you turn it sideways, I'll save it. I really just need to save the list of words, and then I can restore it. So M word list is equal to. Saved instance state dot get string array list words. Cool. 
so the thing here though I actually yes I need to tell the adapter that it's changed but remember I've already created the adapter at this point remember the adapter was created in on create um, so if I'm down here at this point I actually need to recreate the adapter because I can't just change the list of words that are in there so I'm going to say M adapter equals new um, word list adapter this and word list and then m recycler view dot set adapter so I save the word list and then I restore it and then I just create a new adapter and put that into the recycler view. Okay. So let's see if this works. Okay. So I'm going to add a few items first at the end. I'm going to hit clicked on a few of these. So if I turn it sideways, these items should still say clicked, and those items should still be at the bottom. There we go. So I've got click clicked. Does the, if you click like to mm -hmm. the right, because the width is, does it, does the on click still run? Yeah, mm -hmm. is that because the width is extending? Because it's to match parent, yeah. Yep. If I were to throw a background on the text view, you could see where the actual bounds are. Okay. okay. Any questions? You can kind of see what's going on here. Um, so we've gone through all of tasks one to three um, for your code labs for four or five. Um, so all that's left really for you to do is go do the coding challenge and the homework. Okay. Oh, yeah, Confused about the second coding challenge. Yeah, um, you really only need to do the first coding challenge. You can kind of the fact the second one's more of a thought experiment. Um, the first one, I'm really just looking for coding challenge one and the the homework assignment. Mm -hmm. So coding challenge is pretty is is kind of self-explanatory. It says you just want to change the menu to have a reset button so you can reset to the original list. And then the homework is to create another app, kind of reusing, learning how to do this more, um, to do more with this. So it's going to have you build a list of, of um, recipes. So you kind of see you have the title, the name of the recipe, the description. And then when you click on that item, it takes you to another screen, which has the, the image and then more info, the actual recipe. So that's what you want to build for the homework. 